So um, next up we've got Georgie and Milenka from TMOD explaining what they do. Hello. Okay, so um, this is Georgie and I'm Milenka and we're TMOD. Um, we specialise in experiential design across many disciplines and our designs create a sense of personality and experience for the user. So we're really interested in challenging um, functionality and purpose in a product and so far our products at the moment are primarily jewellery and cards. So for those of you who aren't familiar with our work, we'll just take you through a few key pieces. All our pieces are interactive in the way they spin, twist, move, open, or have a double function. This piece here is from our first range. It is a necklace, but it's also a game. So you can wear it whilst at the same time you can fiddle with it and put the balls to into the little engraved circles. This is a piece from our range called Smoke and Mirrors. It's um, a set of interlocking keys and the object of this game is to separate the two keys. Each piece comes with a set of instructions in this range, as you can see here. This piece here is from our range Poetry and Braille. It was done in collaboration with a poet. He wrote the poems and we translated them into Braille and formed them into pieces of jewellery. As you can see, there's a middle rod that goes down the axes and all the pieces rotate so the Braille and the English become like interspersed. And proceeds of this went towards Vision Australia. So this is a piece from our current collection that's just come out now called Long Lost Secrets. And as you can see on the top, it comes with a box of T-Mod max matches and wax seals. So it double acts as a signet with the Pegasus, the winged horse, can actually be used as a seal. And at the same time, it can open, I'm actually wearing it, but I'm not sure if you can see. You can twist it and open it. So it can be worn open or closed in two different ways. So this is one of our pieces of interactive stationery. We'll explain this a little more later on. Um, they're based off the old lotto cards, except you don't win anything. In the top right-hand corner, there's a charm. You take the charm off, scratch off the silver layer, and then you can reveal an image underneath. So this is a picture of our first studio in Newtown, and um, it's obviously a garage. And as you can see, the garage doors open because that was our main source of light. We unfortunately had no running water and no bathroom, so every time we needed to use the toilet, we had to go and buy a coffee from next door. <laughs> and this is actually the state that it was in most of the time. And that's because we handmade everything ourselves. So this was our first range of jewellery. So our first range of jewellery was, as Malanka said, all handmade. We had it, they were balancing ball games and the mazes. They came in four different pieces. So we had to sand, varnish and dremel every single piece by hand. These pieces took over an hour to make. I sanded my fingers off many times. Anyway, <laughs> so we had a lot of problem finding a screw to fit the pieces together. We searched high and low and it was very, very difficult on this search for the perfect screw. <laughs> We searched hardwares, fastness shops, hobby shops. We found them in an optometrist. The point to this story is that now we have manufacturers who would source a little tiny screw for us. But this occupied probably about three weeks of our time. So this is the packaging um, that we presented our first range in. And as you can see in the middle, um, we, there's screen printed envelopes. Of course, we chose a colour that wasn't possible to print out of a printer. So we decided to hand screen print every single piece of paper and make them into envelopes. Um, basically, the point of this story is that we were spending no time on our business at growing and developing and all our time in our business actually hand making every single piece. Okay, so after about six months, we went to see our accountant. We had a severe reality check. We sat down with him, he looked at our figures, he looked at us, he looked back at our figures with a concerning look, and he said to us, girls, you 
you do realise that your business fits into the hobby category, don't you? That was um, astounding news to us. Working five days a week, we had no idea that our business was a hobby, but we did realise that it was obviously time to change a few things we were doing. So this is when we decided that we had to stop being designer makers and hand making everything ourselves, as we found it was really difficult to make affordable and accessible jewellery when you were making everything yourselves by hand. We decided to go abroad and source production, but we didn't want to just send off our designs and get them um, sent back made. So we went over there and we worked closely with the artisans to make sure that they fit in with our fair trade and our business ethics. These are some pieces from our latest range, some more of the signets. That's a signet ring. Whilst we were abroad, we also found an alternative to hand screen printing our packaging. We drew our file up in Illustrator and we got it made into boxes. It was a lot easier. It freed up a lot of time for us. So with all this free time, this gave us a little bit of extra time, sorry, to organise the launch for a new range of jewellery. This was like an opportunity to like, create sales and as a form of marketing. As you can see here, this is our invite. If you all reach under your um, bottoms, you have a little um, example of this. They're little fortune cards that you can scratch off to reveal your fortune. Anyway, this is the invite to our launch. The, the, um, the range of jewellery was based on magic and illusions, so we created scratchy card invites. This is where the whole idea evolved from. So you scratched off the silver layer to reveal the details underneath. These were such a hit with everyone and we got such a great response that we decided to start a small little range of scratchy cards and we decided to wholesale them. 